You're listening to the Journey to Launch podcast, a four-year anniversary episode. I'm sharing some personal updates, business updates, all the tea. Tune in. Welcome to the Journey to Launch podcast with your host, Jamila Souffrant. As a money expert who walks her talk, she helps brave journeyers like you get out of debt, save, invest, and build real wealth. Join her on the journey to launch to financial freedom in, in five, four, three, two, one. Hey, 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 journeyers. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe it. <laughs> We have reached four years of the Journey to Launch podcast. It's kind of insane. I almost missed this date, quite honestly. (laughs) I'm actually right now recording this before I head off to Jamaica. Like my flight is literally in a couple hours. And so I was like, I have to record the solo episode or there will not be a solo episode for this anniversary timeline that is coming up. And so this episode will come out on July 21st, which also happens to be my nine-year anniversary with hubby. We've been married nine years. So by the time this comes out, I should be in Miami, hopefully. So as you can see, I got a lot going on in July and in life. Okay. I got a lot going on. (laughs) And so I wanted to record this solo episode in time. And that's the thing with podcasts. I am recording this early. So so many things can happen between this recording and when this episode comes out. And so I'm doing my best to give you the latest and greatest of what's going on. So if you're totally new to the podcast and you're like, hey, this is not giving me any money tips. This is not talking about financial independence. (laughs) Well, I mean, it kind of does. It will. But if you're really looking for some real more topic specific and interviews, check out another episode. But you'll learn a lot about me by kind of just tuning in to this solo episode. And then for my OG journeyers, I know you always love to hear updates. And I know I love hearing updates when people are in the just business owners or in the finance space and they're sharing behind the scenes, because that to me really is what gives you insight onto what people are doing that works and what's successful. And you hear the real challenges behind life and balancing a business and all that I'm doing. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Real quick. So I would like you to do me a favor other than sharing this podcast with your family and friends, leaving me that Apple podcast review. You know, I would love for you to nominate me for this year's Plutus Award. Now the Plutus Awards, it recognizes the best content creators and leaders in the personal finance space. Last year at the Plutus Awards, I won best podcast, podcast of the year. So exciting. And so I want to win again. I want to be nominated. So if you can just do me a favor, it will only take one second. I promise go to journey to launch.com slash Plutus P L U T U S. Then it will populate already the nomination form. Just nominate. It will take two seconds. I promise you can nominate journey to launch the podcast to win podcast of the year again, or some other award. (laughs) All right. Thank you in advance. The journey to launch podcast is supported by digital federal credit union, DCU. There is a way to manage your spending so that you can enjoy life in the present while still being financially responsible for the future. Begin to think of the activities and things you want to spend more on and set a budget. Then plan out how much you need to save monthly to reach that specific goal. For example, if you want to plan a nice trip in 2022, how much will that vacation cost and how can you save towards it over time so that you can take that vacation guilt-free? If you decided to cut back on spending in an area going forward, put that money towards something else you determine is a priority. Look into opening a savings account to help you keep focused on that goal. For example, DCU Digital Federal Credit Union has a primary savings account that offers their members an annual percentage yield on eligible balances that's higher than many savings accounts. To learn more, check out dcu.org. Once again, to learn more, check out dcu.org. If you want the episode show notes for this episode, go to journeytolaunch.com or click the description of wherever you're listening to this episode. In the show notes, you'll get the transcribed version of the conversation, the links that we mentioned, and so much more. 
Also, whether you are an OG journeyer or brand new to the podcast, I've created a free jumpstart guide to help you on your financial freedom journey. It includes the top episodes to listen to, stages to go through to reach financial freedom, resources, and so much more. You can go to journeytolaunch.com slash jumpstart to get your guide right now. Okay, let's hop into the episode. Now, first of all, Thank you. We have hit four years of the Journey to Launch podcast. I was looking at Apple Podcasts. That's where I listen to all my podcasts. And the first episode dropped. Technically, the first episode, uh, this was like a pre-intro that I did, was on July 6, 2017. And then my first full episode came out July 25th, 2017. It's four years later. We have over 2 million downloads. I think the latest I checked was, was 2.5 million And, you know, that's no small feat for an independent podcaster who literally I did not have anything major pushing me, meaning like a major network, or I was not well known in this space at all when I started. And I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of myself that I made it to four years. And I'm proud of you. Some of you have been listening from the very beginning. Some of you have been journeyers from the very first episode. And even if you haven't, right, there's so many people journeyers now that listen and they listen to maybe a recent episode and then they go all the way back and start from 2017 and listen. And so I just, just want to thank you for being on this journey with me. It has been quite a journey. You witness me really start the podcast without knowing what I was doing. I, by the way, plot twist, I still don't know what I'm doing. You saw me quit my job. (laughs) You saw me interview my mom, my husband, most recently, my sisters. I've opened up my life in ways I didn't think that I would. And you've seen me grow as a business owner, you know, from making, I think the first time I shared my income for a journey to launch. Well, this is before I even quit my job. Like I was making peanuts. I wasn't really making much money with journey to launch, but then like taking that leap. And I think the first year I shared, I made like 80 something thousand, not me journey to launch made 80 something thousand. And then the following year, almost more than doubling that. And then on track actually to double that again this year. So you've seen it all. And I really believe like, like I'm just beginning. Seriously, I feel like I just touched the tip of the iceberg on what's possible for me and what's possible for a journey to launch. So I thought with this episode, with this four year anniversary, other than thanking you for being on this ride with me is to just give you some updates on what's been going on with me behind the scenes. So I have a list And I hope I don't have to edit any of this out if things change. I'm so superstitious sometimes. Like I don't even like talking about things until it's like done. You know, like some people will say and celebrate before things are done. And I know that's actually a good quality to have because you can enjoy the moment and the moment of things unfolding. I get a little hesitant because I'm just like, wait, let me make sure the ink is dry. Let me make sure it's actually happening because anything can happen. You know, I'm kind of superstitious like that, but we're going to roll with it and I'm going to share all the goods. So I first wanted to start out with business updates. Things have been really good for Journey to Launch and myself in 2021. And I had to make a few tough decisions. Um, One of them I'm going to share with you right now. And I've already shared this with the people in the launch club. (laughs) They know this. This is not the first time they're hearing this, but this is for people who have not been in the launch club, but have heard me talk about the launch club for the last, what is it, three years But I did make the decision to shut down the Money Launch Club. Like, it's crazy even saying this on the podcast. I told the members already in a group call, and we're in the process of shutting it down. It will be officially closed at the end of August of this year. And I want to just talk a little bit about why I chose to do it, kind of how I came to this decision, and how hard it was for me to do this. So first, what is a Money Launch Club? Because this may be your first time hearing about it. But the Money Launch Club was the membership community that I created for journeyers, for listeners of the podcast, for people who wanted to achieve financial independence. And you love the podcast, but that wasn't enough. You needed guidance, support, community. And so I had this vision that I would create this online membership where people can come together to take that next level with their money and community in this movement and journey to launch. And For the time that the Money Launch Club was running, it was great. I mean, there were members that joined at the first, first beta launch, meaning before I even put it out to the public, I sent an email to my little list. (laughs) Maybe it probably had like 500 500 people on it. 
and said, hey, I'm starting this thing. Do you want to join? And people said yes. And so there have been people who have been in the Money Launch Club from the very beginning and got that special rate. I remember I started the Money Launch Club at $9.99 per month. And then I eventually got the <laughs> the guts to raise it a bit more each every couple months or every six months. And it finally did end at about $24.99 um, per month was the cost or the investment to enter the club. And let me tell you a little bit about why I decided to shut it down. So with Journey to Launch, I have basically tried everything in terms of direct offerings to you, listeners of the podcast, the community, meaning something that will serve you, I can sell you, that also helps keep Journey to Launch running and makes me money, quite honestly, right? I've tried almost everything. I've tried high ticket coaching offers where there were a few, a couple thousand dollars to like join a very small group coaching cohort. I've tried smaller like ebook offers. I've tried courses. I mean, I still have a course, the FI course uh, and memberships and probably some other things I just can't remember right now. But I thought the membership was a good model for me because I thought it was a low commitment in terms of investment for someone to join you know, and memberships, this is how they work. They work at scale depending on the price of the membership. So if you have a membership that is lower priced or I would quote unquote cheaper, you know, meaning maybe like $30 or less for that to work, you need a lot of members, right? And there are people with higher price memberships. I'm a part of some of those memberships where they're like maybe a couple hundred dollars a month, right? And so the less that you're charging per month per member, the more you need at scale to make a membership work. Because let's just say, you know, you're charging $24.99 per month per member. And I also had an annual option with Journey to Launch. You have $24.99 a month, you get 100 members, which is great. That's $24.99 a month, which is okay. But you got to remember that there are costs to running a membership. There's the platform, there is the speaker fee. Like, so in for me, for my membership, I had a speaker come in um, every month. I would host monthly group coaching calls. I actually had to hire community managers to help me with it. So if you're not at scale with a membership that's low cost, it can quickly become something that actually is not generating any profits for your business. And so I struggled for a long time to scale and to grow the Money Launch Club. Now I had, and we had a lot of great members inside, but with any membership, people would cancel and as they should and have the right to. And I was definitely one of those people like cancel. You don't even need to give me a reason. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Or maybe you've gotten what you needed from it and you just need to cancel. Right. And so you have this churn rate with members that they leave. And so it's this constant thing of having to launch and open doors to memberships to get more people in. And I found myself in that kind of treadmill of trying to get more members in, trying to sell a membership, which I thought was very reasonably priced, but it was just hard for some people to take the leap maybe into purchasing a membership in regards to when it comes to money. But I struggled a long time with how to make it more profitable, how to dedicate more time to it and grow it to what I wanted it to be. And for a long time, it felt really heavy. Like it felt like it was out of alignment with what I really wanted to do. And I saw the people with memberships in this space. They were doing really well. Some people had higher price memberships. Some people had lower, but, and they were scaling and they're making money. And, you know, I really had to come to grips that even if this was making more money, would I still want to do this? And my honest answer was no in the format that the membership currently is in. And so I started to feel a lot of dread and anxiety, honestly, around launching and opening doors to the membership. I felt like under pressure and mostly it was from myself because it just felt heavy. It felt like something that I just didn't want to do. But I showed up every month. We had group coaching calls. I created programming. I hired the people I needed to hire to help me run it. You know, we were still doing what we needed. And if you talk to any member, I hope that's even listening. My MLC crew, like they would say they had an amazing experience. But I remember bringing in my sister, Shayna. She was helping me as the community manager for the Money Launch Club. I remember bringing her in last summer with the idea that I think we may need to shut this down. Will you help me figure that out? And of course, I couldn't bring myself to do it because I kept thinking, why can't I make this work? Why can't I make this feel better? How can I make this feel lighter, right? That it's not so heavy. And 
I just couldn't figure out a way to make that work. There were so many other things I wanted to focus on and do. And when I had to pull away from creating content, working on some of the exciting partnerships that I will share with you in a bit, I couldn't do that because then we had to focus on, okay, when are we launching and opening doors for the club again? Like, when are we creating a content schedule for the club? My attention was split. And so even though I brought Shana in over a year ago to talk maybe about closing the membership, we never did. We kept on trucking along because I thought, why can't I make this work? Other people are making it work. (laughs) Other people who have personal finance businesses and memberships are making it work stick it out, stick it out. And I started to realize that this was becoming more of a job. It felt more like what I left behind in my corporate career. Like I literally left corporate America because I wanted to have options. I wanted to do what I loved. And then I quickly found that I was creating something in my business that I didn't love. I love the members. I love you guys, but I didn't love the the model of it. And it's not to say that I won't have a membership again, or the Money Launch Club may not have a revival. But in the space and place that I am in, it felt too heavy. I wasn't happy doing it. And if I'm not happy, quite honestly, I can't produce the best content. I can't produce what I believe you come here to listen to the podcast for and follow me for. Like I want to be at my best so that I can give you my best and not do it from a place of lack. And so it was very hard. Oh my gosh. If you're in the Money Launch Club, you not have not watched that video. So on one of the group coaching calls at the end, I did share it and I did, which is so unlike me, (laughs) start crying because it was over a year of buildup of the feelings. And it was, I felt sad, you know, like, am I doing the right thing? It's not that this wasn't making money and there's no potential. Of course there is. There's so many people in the club that, oh my gosh, the OGs that show up to every single event for the most part, there's so many of them. And I felt bad. It felt like I was, you know, leaving them or giving up. And because I'm so committed to my word, I'm one of those people, if I say I'm going to do something, try to do it to my best ability, it really felt like I was failing. But then I realized that I wanted to model and live the things that I'm telling you to live. And there are probably things right now that you're doing because you feel more out of obligation to do it. You are not happy doing it. You're doing it for other people more than yourself. And it's not even helping these people that you want to help because ultimately people want you to give from a full cup and a happy cup. And I thought to myself, well, maybe this is a lesson one for me that it's okay to let things go. And it doesn't mean that it's ending forever, but for now, for you to do other things, better things, bigger things that will then in turn help your community, help journeyers, help the people ultimately in the Money Launch Club who were once members, you have to let this go. And so it was very hard. If you are in the Money Launch Club and you did not watch that video, it's posted in the Launch Club. We are keeping that video up until the membership officially shuts down for now. But I just wanted to share that with you because it felt like, wow, here you, you know, you're closing something, you're giving up on something. And then I had to flip it and realize that I'm not giving up on something I'm actually giving up on something heavy that if I clip can allow me to fly (laughs) and allow me to do more. And so while it was very emotional and I'm still kind of coming to terms with it myself, I wanted to share that with you, the wider journey to launch audience that for now, the Money Launch Club is no more. We still are having events and our group coaching calls and we're going to the end. I have some cool things planned for the rest of the time that we have together with the Money Launch Club members. But it was definitely a big part. Like it was like one of the hardest decisions I've made so far in my business. And so if you are right now facing something similar, whether in business or personal life, like real talk, I felt like it was like a relationship, almost like a, like a decent relationship where, you know, you're with someone, but you're not completely happy. And you see other people complaining about their partners or happy with their partners. And you're like, well, here I am with this thing. It has potential. Why can't I make this work? But still sticking around and giving it time, you know, like years and it's still not working. And then waking up one day, 20, 30 years later, realizing that you have let your life pass by because you have not lived in your truth and haven't been honest with your partner. And so I really thought of it like that with the membership. And by the way, all the launch club members, most of them were very supportive. Oh my God. We all were crying (laughs) on the call and they were so supportive So I just know that there are more things to come with me in Journey to Launch now that I have just a clearer mind and this has been lifted off of me as a responsibility and I can now just further dig deeper into the things that I want to do 
with Journey to Launch and with myself. So that is update number one, the closing of the Money Launch Club. Have you ever wanted to learn how to trade as a side hustle so that you can reach your money goals, like paying off debt, traveling the world, buying a house, and helping you fuel you to financial independence? I've got a special treat for you. I've teamed up with my friend Terry Ijeoma of the Trade and Travel course so that she can help better educate you on what trading is, what day trading is, what swing trading is, if it's right for you to learn how to do this to get into it. Now you can get this free training by going to journeytolaunch.com slash Terry training. That's journeytolaunch.com slash Terry training. And in the training, it's a video or audio training that you can get on demand. You'll learn more about Terry Gioma, how she transitioned from her nine to five to being a full-time entrepreneur and traveling the world, how trading allowed her to buy her dream house in the cash, the different types of trading, long-term investing, short-term investing, day trading, swing trading, how to trade as a form of income to pay off debt, save, and supplement your income. And then of course, who should take Terry's course? We're going to talk about this, a trade and travel course, because this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is something you have to put time and energy into learning. So we cover all of that and you can get that right now by going to journey to launch.com slash Terry training to get the training right now for free journey to launch.com slash Terry training. Another update I have, which I am really, it's a full circle moment. There's so many full circle moments. I mean, is it full circle if the circle never ends? Cause I feel like this is only the beginning still. But I recently announced that I am going to be speaking at FinCon as a big idea speaker. And let me tell you something. I have uh, been to FinCon. My first FinCon was actually in 2017. My first FinCon, I even did a podcast episode about it. I think it was actually episode 17 if you want to go all the way back and listen to my recap. And I talked about going to FinCon. And by the way, FinCon, for those of you who are like, what is that, Jamila? Um, We're not like in this personal finance space that you're in. What are you talking about? FinCon is a conference for personal finance creators. So whether you're a blogger, writer, podcaster, you you have something that's serving in the space of money, content or business or product, FinCon is the place to be. And so I went to FinCon for the first time in 2017 and had an amazing experience. I think I went back a couple of times since 2017. And I remember going and the podcast was really, it was, it was early back then. Cause I think I only had maybe less than 10 episodes when I went or maybe a little more, but I got to meet some of the guests that I had on the show in person. I got to meet the people I used to listen to on my commute to work. Right. So the people that I was listening to and, or the bloggers that I read and people I followed on Instagram, like I saw them in person. And I always say that going to FinCon really changed the trajectory of my career with Journey to Launch and my life because I made in-person connections and walked away with so many great ideas that really put Journey to Launch and myself on the map, honestly. And so I always like give it up to FinCon as like that space that was, that was able to bring together all these creators and these people to create this energy. And I would sit in the audience when they had their speakers and their big idea speakers. So they typically have a keynote, you know, the, the, the person that does the big speech, they usually have maybe one or two of those. And then they have big idea speakers. So they tap people who are in the community who can give a speech and they usually maybe have two to maybe three people do that. And I remember sitting and thinking when I was watching any of these people on stage, like, wow, I want to be there one day, which was so bold for me to think because when I went to the first FinCon, like I didn't, I mean, there was, there are thousands of people that come to FinCon or conferences like that who have the same goal and want to kind of make it, make their dreams come true. And of course, some people like end up not doing anything and end up quitting their business and just kind of doing something else. And so here I am sitting in the audience, looking at these speakers and thinking to myself, I want to be there one day. And I remember, you know, going to a couple more FinCons after that. I didn't go last year, you know, pandemic and all that. But I said to myself, you know, I think for now I need to just put my head down and do the work. I've always been like that. Like, I'm going to do the work where I'm going to want, like, you're going to want me on your stage. That's kind of like how I think. I'm like, one day you're going to ask me to be on your stage. (laughs) I don't even have to ask anyone. You're going to come to me. And that's kind of how I operate. It's like, okay, maybe you don't know my name now. Maybe the idols, quote unquote, that I 
look to, listen to, don't know me yet, but you're going to know me, right? That's kind of like my attitude with things that I'm just going to do the work. I'm going to do the work until you can't even ignore me because I'll be everywhere. And so I had no real plans to go to FinCon this year again. Honestly, I was like, I'm putting my head down and do the work. But I got an email um, that said, hey, do you want to be a big idea speaker? Your name keeps coming up in the community as someone people would like to hear from. And I said to myself, wow, yeah, (laughs) yeah, let's do this. This was something that was on my goal list. This was something I did envision and want. And here I am. I have this opportunity to take the stage. And so I will be taking the stage as a big idea speaker at Austin at FinCon in 2021. And so they have virtual tickets and in-person tickets. So I know some people are not comfortable traveling yet. Some people are. I'm fully vaccinated. So I'll be there. But you can join me if you haven't bought tickets yet. Go to finconexpo.com slash 21. That's fin, F-I-N-C-O-N-E-X-P-O dot com slash 21. And then if you use the code FCJOURNEY5, you get $5 off your ticket. So you can either join me virtually or in person in Austin, I'm going to be taking the stage. I have not decided on my topic. I have so many topics I want to discuss, but I want to make sure it's a really good one. But I'm really excited about this. And I can't wait to see you guys at FinCon or at least uh, talk to you more about the experience. So that's another update. So now we're going to the next update. <laughs> I am writing a book, but I'm not at that stage of writing the book yet. So I've been talking a little bit about this over the last few months that I put the intention out there. I want to write a book, but I do, I want to do it the traditional publishing way, which takes a while. It's a process. There's so many levels um, and layers to it, and it can take years to get a book out into the world. And so I'm at the stage now where I'm working on my proposal. So let me just quickly walk you through if you're not familiar with the book publishing world, the traditional one. So typically with nonfiction books, you write a proposal You have a proposal and you now then shop for a literary agent if you don't have one already. And that can take a while, right? So to get an agent, they have to love your work, love you, because they're going to be fighting to get your publisher to take a look at your work. And then the literary agent only gets paid if you get a book deal. So you you write your proposal, you secure a literary agent that is going to, that gets you, that's going to fight for you. That agent then sends out your proposal to publishing houses that they have connections with or that they don't, but they send out your proposal and hopefully you have publishers who are interested in you. And if it goes really well, you get publishers who will go into a bidding war over your proposal and that helps you with a bigger book deal. And guys, I'm not even done. That's just the first part of this, <laughs> the book writing or book publishing process. So let's just say you get a publisher, you get multiple deals. Hopefully you select one, select the publisher. Now you can begin one after the contract is secured. You can begin writing a book that can take, depending on the publisher schedule, months. Um, There are some people I know who have signed deals last year and the books are not coming out until 2023 because it takes that much time, depending on the cycle or the type of book you have to write the book, to edit the book, and then to get it into production. I'm at the very beginning, as you can see, like there are like 20 steps. I am at step one. (laughs) I am at step one of writing the proposal, but I feel very, I feel very hopeful because I've already had publishing houses reach out to me and ask if I want to write a book. And I've had people who are ready and willing to introduce me to their agents. I have agents that have already reached out to me. So for me, it's really a matter of creating um, a really good and solid proposal, a book that I want to write. Like, I don't want to write a book just because I want to write a book that is impactful, that captures the essence of what you hear on this podcast, that shares my story. Because here's the thing. I know not everyone listens to podcasts. I know you don't listen to every podcast I put out. And you may have friends and family that are not into podcasts, but you want them to get on the journey to launch train, meaning the financial independence train. You want them to learn about getting freedom from where they are. And so books are just more accessible. They live on forever. You know, I've always considered myself someone who loved reading, especially when I was younger. I read so much and thought I'd one day be a writer. And so I, it's a dream of mine to have this happen. And so I feel like I'm getting so many confirmations that, that it is going to happen. 
And I'm excited to share more of that journey with you. I'm really in the beginning stages of it, but it's so promising. And I'm so excited about what this looks like in the future. So stay tuned. I will keep updating you as I get more updates, as I finish the proposal, as I'm shopping for an agent, a literary agent, I'll share that all with you. Okay. A couple more updates business-wise for Journey to Launch. I do have a couple like major deals in the works. Some of them I I really can't say. I hate when people do that. You know, like I have something, but I can't say, (laughs) but I'm going to do that to you right now. Sorry. Because nothing's signed yet, but these are the type of deals that will change my life. (laughs) Meaning it will position me even more as a thought leader in this space and provides more security financially. So I'm really excited about it. And I hope that by the time this episode comes out, I can share more details. So maybe just Follow me on Instagram. That's where I typically make announcements and make sure you're on my newsletter. So I typically, for people who find out things first, usually are on my newsletter or I share it on social media. So if you want to join my newsletter and you have not yet, you can go to journeytolaunch.com slash join. That should take you to like a general opt-in page or make sure you're following me on my social media. I'm mostly on Instagram at journey to launch. And then I play around a bit on my personal brand account at Jamila Soufran. So stay tuned and maybe you'll see more announcements. The last couple of things I'll just quickly mention is numbers. So business numbers. I have been sharing my income numbers for the past couple of years because I've always been inspired when other people have done this, you know, shared, oh, I made, you know, $30,000 this year. And next year I'm on track to make X amount. I find that sharing the numbers are helpful. I don't know how often or how much more I will share the actual numbers because for me, it just becomes a level of being comfortable and and I don't know how much more comfortable I'll be, but I do want to share the trajectory of how Journey to Launch is doing because I think it provides, hopefully, inspiration for you. Your business journey, if you are a business owner or entrepreneur or you're thinking about it, because literally, like I started at zero and I am on track for 2021 to double my revenue again from last year. And when I say my revenue, journey to launch revenue, not Jamila's take home revenue, (laughs) not yet at least, but I'm excited about that because we're only six months, about halfway into the year. And if all goes well, if I can double business revenue, and by the way, that is not my goal to keep doubling revenue. I am totally fine with sustained growth. I don't want to actually grow that fast. I'm just growing at the pace God wants me to at this point which it feels like he wants me to go and <laughs> go and go. But it's really about creating a sustainable revenue model, a way in which I am making money and serving you. So I am making money, like Jamila Souffrant is able to feed her children, all three of them, all hundred of them, <laughs> you know, my three little babies to live a life where I feel comfortable. You know, the last thing I always say this, the last thing I want to do is tell you to go be free and wealthy, and financially independent, and live your best life, ask for your coins, and here I am struggling. We can't do that. (laughs) Why would you even believe anything I'm saying if you can't see me also living a life of intention and abundance and wealth? And to me, wealth does not look like, you know, having the nicest things. It just means like the continual ability to choose, like to, to choose to close the membership, right? Knowing that, yeah, it made money last year. It's making money this year, but I, it's just not something that feels good. And I remember when I made the announcement that I was quitting my job on this podcast, I forgot the exact episode. I'll link it in the show notes. But I said to myself, when I was preparing to take the leap, I said to myself on that podcast episode, the one thing that I wanted to continue to do, because I had my corporate job when I was doing Journey to Launch, and that made it so much easier because I said to myself, well, I'm under no pressure to make money. I'm under no pressure to sell you anything. If I don't, you know, if it does, if it's not right, or partner with anything that I don't feel comfortable with, I can say no. And I always wanted to maintain that autonomy, that level of power, so that I knew that I was only doing things that were in alignment and that were good for you as my listeners and journeyers and for me. And I want to be able to keep that. Like that is the goal. And so even with the Money Launch Club, yes, it was making money and it could have definitely made more, but that wasn't the reason why I wanted to keep it. And that's that will never be a reason that I will do anything is for just the money. But be clear, money (laughs) is important to me. It's important to my family. And having more of it honestly helps Journey to Launch grow, obviously, because the more money I have, the more people I can employ, 
I don't have any full-time employees yet, but that is something on the to-do list potentially in the future. And to be able to support other people, to be able to deliver more, better content, I'm excited about that. And so the fact that Journey to Launch continues to grow and I can actually turn down, like I literally can turn down opportunities that just don't fit, I don't feel are right, or maybe there's something that is in the works, right? If something, some deals fall through that are in the works right now, I'll be okay. I won't be devastated. I'm not hanging on a thread. And that feels so good. That means, you you know, Journey to Launch, from what I understand, will be around at least for another couple of years. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not just running on a wish and a prayer. So I continue to grow and make decisions in terms of revenue and how I make money, which maybe can be another whole podcast episode that also serves you, but also serves me. So I'm happy about that. All right. That's like my business stuff. The only other thing is the podcast. You know, this is my major, major way to deliver you content. Every week for the past four years, I have put out an episode. I don't even think, I think I repeated one episode, the Black Tax episode with Sean Rochester. I think that's been the only time I repeated an episode on a Wednesday. But for the past four years, you've gotten a new episode every Wednesday. And that might not be the case going forward. I might do some reruns because your girl may need a break one day. Hello. (laughs) But I'm consistent if you have not realized. And I know consistent and persistence breeds success, which is why I do this and I'm on kind of like this track. But it also feels good. It's always felt good to do the podcast. And so the podcast, um, for me, the priority here is to grow it, to continue to grow it. We have over 2 million downloads and I'm excited about that as an independent podcaster. That's big. I mean, I just pulled up my podcasting hopes. It's about to hit 2.6 million. Yay. (laughs) But honestly, it can be better. It can be better. It's not to discount where it is, but I mean, there can be more people hearing about this. And so I always say, If you are listening to this, make sure you're following the podcast or subscribe. That means you won't miss an episode, especially on Apple Podcasts. And if you don't have to listen on Apple Podcasts, there's Spotify, there's Google Podcasts, there's my website. It's just that make sure you are continually locked in so that you don't miss it. That helps with the downloads and that you're sharing the episodes with your family and friends. That matters a lot. I am considering joining a network, meaning um, someone who can help get the podcast to more people, like a distribution channel. So I'll tell you more about that as I discover that. But I realized that the podcast is my jam. <laughs> and for Journey to Launch to Grow, it's really, yes, word of mouth. It has been amazing. That's how I've grown this much since I started. But it's time to also level up and um, have more of the world hear it. So just keep in tune on how that's going to unfold. But if you want to help me and to continue to help Journey to Launch Grow, the best thing you can do is continue to listen. Make sure you're follow or subscribed, leave that review, and then tell your family and friends about it. Post about it onto your social media, take that screenshot, tag me. I always love resharing that, and that's how you can help me. All right. Oh my gosh. That was my business updates for now. <laughs> I'm going to do some more personal updates now because, listen, if there's a person. I'm a real person behind the mic. I have a life and I have feelings and kids and responsibilities, and this all impacts how I show up with Journey to Launch. Um, it's so intertwined now, which, you know, before when I worked in corporate America, it was so separate. Like I, I couldn't bring my whole self to work. I couldn't really be me a hundred percent. And with Journey to Launch, it's like, I, I am Journey to Launch. Eventually one day I do want to not be the face of Journey to Launch, but I am right now. And so the personal stuff matters. So a couple of personal updates, you know, I had a very emotional uh, last couple of days because if you've been listening to this podcast for a bit, you know that I have three kids. And they're pretty young, seven, five, and three. They all just had birthdays. And I had help though. So in the house, I had help. My aunt, my wonderful aunt was here helping us, which allowed me, when you guys asked me, how do you do all of this? How do you, you know go for runs in the middle of the day? And <laughs> it's like, cause I had help, you know, real talk. And, you know, my aunt, because the kids are all getting to the school age, they'll all be in school in September. It was like that time where she wanted to move on. We wanted like, it was just that time, right? It was not going to be the situation forever. And she actually did leave. And I'm, it's so scary because she's been living with us and helping us since my first baby was six months old. And so here we are like six and a half years later. And I'm scared. I'm, I'm really scared <laughs> how I'm going to manage this all. 
I know at the end of the day, I was super lucky. We were super lucky to have her, but it's still like there was a, that safety net, you know, like that safety net that now it's like just us. And it doesn't mean like we may not have other help, hopefully, <laughs> but it's scary to know that it's just going to be us and it's not going to be as, oh, we, I can just go run. Like I, my schedule is going to have to look a little bit different. And so that's been scary. I know we're going to navigate and get through it. Hopefully things are back to normal in the fall and the kids are able to all be in school consistently. But uh, yeah, that's going to be a thing. And it's a big adjustment because not only will we miss her, right? Just miss her in general, but it's just not having that that safety net is going to be a change for our family, of course. And then the kids like in us missing her is like another thing on top of that. With that though, we had a basement um, apartment or place that she was able to live. And so we're getting that back in a way in which we want to hopefully redo the space and maybe I can get an, an actual office. Lord knows I need one because right now I'm recording like in the middle of the kitchen. Like my husband probably wants to come in and do the dishes or do something. And <laughs> I'm like, stay over there. So I need like my own space. So, you know, hopefully one of the things that I want to invest in is doing the basement over to make it more functional, make it another part of our home that we actually enjoy and can use. We actually had plans to potentially do our backyard. And I, doubt, I think the office or the downstairs area will take, um, it's more of an importance at this point. So maybe the backyard project will wait. But I'm excited about that, unfolding that and having another space um, that I can really be in and run my $100,000 business from, one day million dollar business from. Also, so I told you at the beginning of this, when this comes out, I'll be celebrating my nine year at wedding anniversary with my husband. Our anniversary is July 21st. So we will be in Miami. We booked the trip already. So hopefully if you go to my Jamila Souffrant Instagram, we will be on a beach, <laughs> Miami beach or somewhere in a hotel. And I'm excited because we have not obviously went away or have been together in this way in such a long time, especially because of the pandemic. We're both vaccinated. And so we're just like, look, you know, if we can get someone to help us with our a million kids, let's go do this. Let's do this for ourselves. And typically when we were traveling, it was very budget. Like we stayed at the most budget friendly places and we are spending the most I've ever spent on a hotel for this anniversary trip. So I'm excited about that experience and indulging. And like I said, I'm actually recording this before I need to go leave for my flight to Jamaica my brother is getting married. So I'm really excited to go see my siblings in Jamaica and my family that I haven't seen in such a long time. And so it really feels indulgent because I'm leaving like twice in the month of July to go away, which is like, who do I think I am? And I have so much business stuff going on, but I'm juggling it. I'm figuring it out. I hope you are figuring it out too. What other choice do we have, journeyers? right? We can do this. <laughs> Life is going to throw things at us that are not going to be expected, but we will adapt. You're a journeyer. You will chart your course of action. And if it needs to change, it will change. But I know, as same as I know for myself, that things unfold and happen for a reason. And I will be speaking at FinCon this year. As I said, it's going to be in Austin. So if you want to join me in person or virtually at this year's FinCon, FinCon 2021 in Austin or virtually, you can do that by going to finconexpo.com slash 21. You could get your ticket and get some money off by putting in the code FCJourney5. So once again, go to finconexpo.com slash 21. Put in the code FCJourney5 and you get $5 off your pass to join me in person at FinCon 21 in Austin, I will be taking the main stage and giving my big idea speech. You can also join virtually if you want. FinConExpo.com slash 21. Use the code FCJourney5 for a discount. I'm excited to share all these updates with you. If you want to keep up with what's going on, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I mostly hang out at Journey to Launch and at Jamila Souffrant. Make sure you're following or you're subscribed to the podcast so you do not miss an episode. I have so many cool, amazing episodes coming out over the next few weeks. And then join my newsletter at journeytolaunch.com slash win. And yay to four years of the podcast. I appreciate you. Thank you for helping me get to over 2.5 million downloads so far. And we are just beginning. Okay, journeyers, we're just beginning. 
And so continue to share the podcast, continue to tell your family and friends about the podcast. Maybe there's an episode that really stuck with you or something that you want to share with someone. Share that, share the knowledge and wealth. Don't be greedy. All right, until next week. Keep on journeying, journeyers. Don't forget, you can get the episode show notes for this episode by going to journeytolaunch.com or click the description of wherever you're listening to this. And you can still grab your jumpstart guide for free to help you on your journey to financial freedom by going to journeytolaunch.com slash jumpstart. If you want to support me and the podcast and love the free content and information that you get here, here are four ways that you can support me in the show. One, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast wherever you listen, whether that's Apple Podcasts, that purple app on your phone, your Android device, YouTube, Spotify, wherever it is that you happen to listen, just subscribe so you are not missing an episode. And if you're happening to listen to this in Apple Podcasts, rate, review, and subscribe there. I appreciate and read every single review. Number two, follow me on my social media accounts. I'm at Journey to Launch on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And I love, love, love interacting with journeyers there. Three, support and check out the sponsors of this show if you hear something that interests you. Sponsors are the main ways we keep the podcast lights on here. So show them some love for supporting your girl. Four, and last but not least, share this episode, this podcast with a friend or family member or coworker so that we can spread the message of Journey to Launch. All right, that's it. Until next week, keep on journeying, journeyers. Journeyers.